In some deaths, police usually are quick to establish whether foul play is involved. This is normally determined by the scene of the crime and the examination of the body. However, in this case, the police ruled there was no foul play involved. But is this actually the case? Get comfy, grab yourself a mocha as we investigate the case of Phoebe Hansdruck. Phoebe Hansdruck was a 24-year-old woman from Melbourne, Australia. She was a lively and outgoing individual and loved by everyone close to her. She had a close-knit family and was in a relationship with barista Anthony Hampel. On December 2nd, 2010, Phoebe's body was found at the bottom of a garbage chute in the Silk Kilda Road apartment building where her boyfriend lived. Initially, her death was ruled as accidental by the coroner. On the 7th of December, homicide detectives said there was no second party involved in Phoebe's death. She had entered the chute feet first voluntarily after taking prescription drugs and drinking. The investigation into her death has come under major scrutiny. Detective Senior Constable Howells, one of the attending police, noted a trail of dirt marks apparently left by the footwear of either a tall person or someone running along the 12th floor hallway. But these were not photographed, sampled, measured or further examined. Phoebe's grandfather, retired Detective Sergeant Lorn Campbell, had suspicions regarding the circumstances surrounding her death. He began to ask questions of the police and to make his own inquiries. Due to public pressure and ongoing scrutiny, a coronal inquest was conducted in 2014. Coroner Peter White presided over the inquest, which aimed to delve deeper into the circumstances surrounding Phoebe's death. In the 2014 inquest, Coroner White concluded that Phoebe Hanstrick's death was a result of misadventure. This conclusion suggested that Phoebe had voluntarily entered the garbage chute and accidentally fell to her death. The finding was based on the evidence presented during the inquest, including forensic analysis and witness testimonies. Despite the official findings, alternative theories continue to circulate, with some speculating about the possibility of foul play or coercion. These theories were fueled by inconsistencies in the investigation and unanswered questions surrounding the events leading up to Phoebe's death. The public and media pushed the theory that Phoebe's boyfriend had either coerced her into the garbage chute or pushed her and made it look like an accident. Mr. Hampel arrived home at 6.09pm and Phoebe was discovered by the concierge between 7.04 and 7.11pm. This means he was home for nearly an hour before she was found. There was no evidence of time of death. There were indications that Mr. Hampel had used his computer at different times over that period and his counsel claimed that the computer usage served as alibi evidence. However, the analyst was unable to say for how long Mr. Hampel used the computer after each logged time. His initial logon was at 6.19pm, nearly 10 minutes after he entered the apartment. According to the family, it was quite easy for a reasonably strong male to carry a young woman of Phoebe's size and weight in an unconscious state over his shoulder and put her feet first into the chute. Even though there is no known motive in Phoebe's death, they believe it is still very possible he had done it. He could have knocked Phoebe unconscious in a spontaneous fit of anger and put her into the chute, all in just a few minutes. While there is no conclusive proof that something like this occurred, there is evidence consistent with a physical altercation having taken place in the apartment. There have also been many times where he's changed his story after evidence has come out that contradicted his initial statements. Phoebe had unexplained injuries to her head, which seemed to be unlikely results of a feet-first fall. This is consistent with her being struck on the right side of the jaw with sufficient force to knock the left side of her against a solid object such as a wall if she had been close to or leaning against one. There was also an adjacent one centimetre abrasion on the outside of Phoebe's head above her left ear consistent with striking something. This injury can cause unconsciousness and the pathologist made no comment as to its possible cause. The possibility of another party being involved also arose from the observations of a witness. A person apparently working as a tradesman on the 20th floor of the apartment block that day was observed by a tenant mid-afternoon, getting into the lift in which she was travelling from the underground parking area. The tenant said the tradesman did not use a swipe but pushed a button and the 12th floor light was illuminated. Since a swipe was not used, this would mean that the person had to be buzzed up by someone on the 12th floor. The tenant said she exited the lift at the 6th floor so she did not see the man get out. Under the pressure of cross-examination, she became less certain that it was the light for the 12th floor which came on. 
following media publicity, the tradesman was identified and interviewed by the police. He denied visiting the 12th floor and his denial was accepted, since there was no contradictory electronic recording of any buzz up to the 12th floor. However, the recording system was shown to be defective, when no recording was found to indicate members of the Hampel family going to the 12th floor later in the evening of Phoebe's death. There was also a period of around 20 minutes when the fire alarm was pulled, which had resulted in Phoebe going outside the front door of the building with her dog when the computer system for recording buzz-ups was deactivated entirely. This would have allowed anyone to access any part of the building undetected by the recording system during that period. The coroner described Phoebe cleaning up broken pieces of glass and putting them into a garbage bag, but there was no evidence that she did this or of pieces of glass being found in a bag. There was a noticeable amount of broken glass on the floor. The coroner positively found that she cut herself on the glass, apparently choosing this as an explanation for traces of blood being found in the apartment. There was blood on a computer mouse, a computer mouse pad, and a door. The door was the only blood stain in the apartment which was DNA tested. It was shown to be Phoebe's. There was no blood on the broken glass in the apartment. Droplets of her blood were found on the floor of the 12th floor bin room. The coroner also said Phoebe had been drinking vodka from the glass. Anthony Hampel said that he smelt vodka in a glass on the kitchen bench where there were two glasses set out as if someone else had been drinking with her. Neither of the glasses nor the broken glass was connected to Phoebe by fingerprints as they were never checked. No broken glass fragments were found in the kitchen waste bin or in the single rubbish bag that came from the wheelie bin into which she fell in the ground floor bin room. Phoebe had alcohol and steel knocks in her system when she died. The family believed this would have made it impossible for her to have carried herself over the garbage chute and throw herself down. On top of this, photographs showed that there was relatively little dirt on Phoebe's body or clothes, and evidence was given that the inside of the shaft was very dirty. This meant that her hands, clothing and skin should have been really dirty, especially her back. Her singlet would have unavoidably ridden up. The examination of Phoebe's body documented that her height was 166 centimetres when she was 175 centimetres. Either the post-mortem measurement was incorrect or her body had been compressed and shortened by the force of her fall. For the pathologist, the task of making an accurate height measurement could have been difficult given the fractures to both legs and the near severance of the right foot, which remained attached by only a single tendon. The coroner discounts family evidence of Phoebe's height and has accepted the pathologist's measurement of 166 centimetres as her actual height. This would support her grandfather's theory that she did not free fall, because if 166 centimetres was her true height, it would mean there would be no compression of her body. Despite all of this, Phoebe's death was ruled as either an accidental fall or a suicide. In 2020, Anthony Hamble was at the centre of another suspicious death. Hours after she had split up with him, model Bailey Schneider supposedly killed herself in her parents' kitchen. She was found lying on the floor with a gold cord tied around her neck. Miss Schneider's death was initially ruled a suicide, but referred to a homicide squad for further review. Deputy Coroner Caitlin English said the review had established her cause of death in her family home with self-inflicted asphyxiation. Miss English accepted investigators had not identified any suspicious circumstances relating to the death. What do you think? Do you believe this was a murder covered up by her barista boyfriend and friends in the force? Or was this just a tragic accident? Don't forget to subscribe so you're notified on my next true crime case. And like the video if you really did like the video. Also comment down below your thoughts on this case, along with any others you would like me to look into. It could be my next one.